Uh, good evening, my YouTube viewers. <coughs> Crystal here. I'm just here this evening because I wanted to give you another solution to the Digit Recognizer competition on Kaggle. And this solution, basically what I did was I used the XGB classifier um, function to um, predict what the... Uh, digits were going to be on the MNIST CSV train and test files. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you to give you evidence that I the only thing I did was I changed out the um, random forest or maybe it was random forest classifier. I'm not sure exactly. Changed out the nearest changed out the random forest classifier or it was a tree definitely and uh, I just replaced it with XGB that's the only thing I did and you can see that my score went from 83.56% all the way to 96.49% and that's what I did and I wanted to show you my submissions so you could see all the work that I've done so this morning I did, uh, I put the random forest in there, or it was um, a decision tree. It was definitely a decision tree. And um, I got 83.56 when I corrected the errors. And then I tried to do another one. I found another um, algorithm on Kaggle, and I tried to use it, and it didn't work. It went into error, and it didn't work. Um, I didn't think it was going to work because when I looked at the um, submission file, one of the one of the numbers, one of the ID numbers, was actually NAN. So I thought it wasn't going to work, but I thought, well, it took so long, it took such a long time for the a computer to run through all of the algorithms I thought well I'll go ahead and try it and I tried it and it just didn't work um, it went into error and then so the next time what I did was I modified some of the coding took out some of the more elab took out one of the more elaborate lines and put in one that was more simplistic and so it worked but it gave me a zero percent tile which means that not one of the digits was correct and so as a result of that I just completely discarded that algorithm and that's one of the problems that we have on Kaggle is that people put their notebooks on Kaggle when it doesn't work and this person who put this notebook on Kaggle said it had like 94% accuracy or something like that and I just sub I just substituted a decision tree for um, XGB classifier and I got a 96.49% and that's all I did and it was a very simple code. So that's what I wanted to show you just to show you that yes this does actually work. So we'll go <clears throat> into our notebooks and we're not going to use the decision tree because that's what I had used to get the get my um, accuracy up in the 80s what we're going to do is we're going to do the recognize the digit XGB and you can see that this was a successful algorithm I got 96.49 percentile which is a very good percentile considering the fact that I just started working on it it's a very easy algorithm. It's much more simplistic than this other algorithm that I was studying today that crashed. Well, that didn't work. So, but that's what I was reading. I was reading that people need to make their algorithms as simple as possible, and which is what this was a very simple algorithm. And it did the job much better. Well, it did the. Uh, than the previous algorithm that was very complex. So we'll just talk about what we did to review the code. And so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this notebook public. 
So if you want to look at it, you can look at it. And the first thing we did was we installed our libraries and you can see it only used NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and XG, XGBoost. <coughs> then we imported our files and then we read our files, our train file, test file, and sample submission. So you can see the train file, which has a label column. And you can see info on the train file. And it had 42,000 uh, rows, which mean 42,000 images. And you can see the test file. The test file does not have a label. The test file, the label is missing. In addition to that, there's no ID number. The test file and the train file do not have an ID number, so you have to create an ID number. Because we look at sample submission, and um, in sample submission you have to create an ID number because there is no ID number in the train file or the test file. So that's something that you have to do. And basically what you do is you create the ID number from the index, and then you have to add a one because the first number in the ID is one. So it's going to be test.index plus one is going to be the solution to actually get um, one as one to 28,000 as being your ID numbers. So we set up our model CLF equals XGB classifier. The very, that was the only thing we did. It was a very simple model to use. XGBoost uses a lot more difficult um, algorithms than that in order, because in one aspect of it, in order, in some algorithms, in order to prepare the material, you have to use something called D-matrix, but we didn't use it in this instance. I don't know if it was because um, we just were dealing with binary logic, and because we were dealing with binary, binary logic, maybe it worked nevertheless. So your data, your dt equals train dot values, dt equals train dot s type int 64, and your train size equals the length of dt uh, in half. So that's going to be 21,000 is going to be your train size. So then what we do is we establish the links, and I decided rather than putting 21,000 into the code, I was just going to put train size into the code. So we set up the, the train size for the um, train file and the test file. So we fit our model, and you can see here that it tells you what all the parameters of XGB classifier are, and I'm supposed that if I wanted to, I could fine tune it to uh, give you a greater accuracy, but I just thought, well, 96 is pretty close. <laughs> I'm not going to mess around with it, but it says right here, objective is multi-soft problem. It should have been objective is binary, but it did it. No, it's not. Sorry. It, that's correct. It's not by, it is, it isn't binary, but the numbers that were in the file were binary. So now what we're doing is we're setting up the testing data link. So X test equals train iLock, train size one, actual label equals train iLock, train size zero. And I had to put iLock in there to get it to work. The original code didn't have iLock in there. iLock means like local, local index, I believe. But it didn't work if that iLock wasn't in there, so I had to put it in there. And this here is a code that I just made remarks, but if you want to open it up and take the little hash marks out, then what it would do is it would print you a diagram, but I didn't want the diagram to be included in this model, so I just made it remarks. But if you want to test it and see what happens, take all of the hash marks out of it, except for the plot image, and you will get a diagram of a digit.
So P means is your prediction, means CLF.PredictXTest. And then I wanted to see what P is, and P is an array. I wanted to see the shape of P, and P is 21,000 uh, digits, which is half of the train file being 42,000 digits. Okay, now what we do here is this code here sets up your accuracy. It says right here accuracy 9.804. Um, I, I, that's what I thought when I set up my, um, when I, when I submitted my submission, I thought I was going to have a really low accuracy, but I didn't care because I thought, well, I just want to get on the leaderboard. And if I have a low accuracy, then I can work on that. But as you can see, as you have seen, I had a very high accuracy, a lot higher than what I had been expecting. So now what we're doing is we're setting up our test file length. So TT equals test values. TT equals test.s type int64. And test size is the length of TT. But we end up not using test size anyway. Test size is really used only to determine accuracy. But we're not going to find out accuracy until we submit our file to Kaggle. So we set up the test data link. So XT1 equals test iLock, test size 1. And then we predict on the test set. So P1 equals CLF dot predict dot test. And I wanted to see what P1 is. And P1 is an array. I wanted to see the shape of P1. The shape of P1 is 28,000 digits, which was the size of the test file. So in this instance, we did not use the other uh, coding because that coding is not necessary. That The only thing that that coding did was determine the accuracy. And you can't determine the accuracy because we didn't have a file to train on. And in addition to that, when I tried to run the code, it went into error. And I just thought, well, since I don't need the code anyway, I'm just going to delete that portion. So I set up my uh, submission file. So you had to have an image ID, and that's test.index plus one. That's how you created your image ID. And the label was P1. So and then we created a CSV file. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to see the submission. So you can see the submission, which has your index file and over here you've got index which is false so the index doesn't show up when you submit your file and we've got an image id and a label and when i submitted that um i got a 96.49 percentile which is very good so i just wanted to show you this solution to this kaggle competition because i was quite chuffed with myself for getting a 96.49% on, you know, like my, I've only started working on it last night and this morning. And um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the algorithm. And if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you like the work I'm doing and you want to make a donation, I have my email address to my PayPal account down below. I don't have enough subscribers to get monetized, so that's the only way I can make any money from my videos is to ask for donations. And thank you so much for watching my video, and I'm looking forward to making a new one for you.